Hello, and welcome to another tutorial on how to make an automatic airlock in Starbound. In this tutorial, we're going to look at an airlock that can both be dry when you're inside your base and wet when you're outside your base. I'll show you how it works now, and then we'll get started. So as you enter the uh, airlock, it's dry, it fills up with water, and then the outer door will open for you. If you leave the base, the uh, door will close and water will stay in the airlock. If you go back towards the airlock, go inside, it will drain and let you into the base. And it will stay dry for the duration of your stay. Both these airlocks are the same, so I'm going to show you what happens. Sorry, this fish were <laughs> putting some water in the airlock. So I'll show you what happens if you make a full loop and approach an airlock that is dry instead of an airlock that is wet. So it may be in the case that you're playing in multiplayer and you'd still like to use an airlock like this. It works exactly the same as it would um, in my old tutorial if you were using the wrong kind of airlock, to, a dry airlock to approach from. There are some fish messing with the airlock, so currently I'm having a little bit of technical difficulties, so we'll just exit through this one. Um, but it's the same if the airlock is wet. It will empty and let you in if you're in the inside of the base. This way you can save time when you're uh, re-entering or exiting through the same airlock. Um, as well as, um, you, you, for useful in multiplayer, you can uh, easily just use the same design. Um, it just might be a little bit less efficient if more, multiple people are going in and out of the same airlock because you'll never know if the airlock will be dry or wet when you approach. All right, so now let, without further ado, let's start making this. Now the first thing you're going to need to make this is you're going to need at least one drain. I have five set up here um, just to make it a little bit faster. I do recommend at least two, um, but you can go as high as four uh, or five with a little bit of a benefit. Um, and I think that it, it works much better with the higher numbers because the water will fill and empty much quicker. The other thing you're going to need is you're going to need two liquid sensors. You're going to need four proximity scanners. You're going to need uh, one latch. You're going to need three not switches. You're going to need three and switches. And you're going to need, uh, optionally, you're going to need one XOR switch and two alarms, or as many as you like. So what you're going to do first is you're going to set up your proximity scanners. You can place these wherever you want. You can place them a little bit further away, um, but they do need to be in range of the door so that they won't just go off um, before you get there. Uh, I think that they have a, a few second delay, so you could put them uh, maybe as far as where I'm holding it right now and walk from the distance before the airlock closes, which might have a problem if you did get stuck in the airlock. There's no way for you to open it unless you have another one right next to it. All right. So the other thing you're going to need to do is put a liquid sensor at the bottom of your airlock. I recommend you put it in the uh, corner closest to your inner door. Um, I'm going to use three for the purposes of this tutorial just to make things a little bit more uniform. And then the other thing you're going to need to do is put a liquid sensor at the top left corner or the top closest um, to the inner door corner that you can find. I'm going to use one on the outside. Again, just to make things a little bit more uniform. Um, the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to start working on your first door. So what we're going to do in this tutorial is we're going to set up the doors first so that they'll only open under certain conditions. Now the only time we ever want to open this inner door um, is if we have the water sensors off, so there's no water at the bottom, which means the airlock will be empty. And if these panels are on, or one of the panels is on. So in order to do that, we're going to need one AND gate and one NOT gate. You can place them wherever you like. I'm just going to place uh, them next to each other so it's much easier to, for you to see what's going on. So you're going to plug both panels into our AND gate first. And then you're going to plug the water sensors, or water sensor if you only have one, into the NOT gate. You're going to plug that NOT gate into your AND gate, and that AND gate into your door. As you can see, if there's no water in the airlock, our doors will now open as long as we approach them. Alright, so now we're going to work on the outer door. The 
outer door, um, we only need one and switch four. What we're going to do is we're going to plug the top water sensor, or water sensors in my case, um, into our end. Let's just do this because it's a little bit easier to read. Actually, let me just move this um, down one space first so that I can put the alarms in after. There we go. Let's make sure it fits. Okay. Yeah, they fit. Alright, so, like I was saying, we're going to use one AND gate. We're going to plug this AND gate into the door, both panels. And we're going to plug the other side into our water sensor, or water sensors in my case. Now you're going to plug the AND gate into your door. And now this will only open if there's water at the top of our airlock and if we are near the door panel. We can test that out really quickly um, just by opening this door. And let's just turn off the drains really quick by plugging them over here. And now it opens, as you can see. So just remove those two wires, close the door and we can get back to work. All right, so the next thing we wanna do um, is we wanna set up a way to tell our main door whether or not it should be open and our drains whether or not they should be on. So in order to do this, we are going to need one AND gate, two NOT gates, and our latch. First thing you should do is hook up your latch to a NOT gate and your NOT gate to all of the drains underneath that you've set up. Um, now you're going to take this uh, latch and you're going to plug it also into the door at the top. We're going to do that first just so as soon as we set up everything else it'll work properly. Now, um, the other things you're going to need for this is you want to check if our main door is not open. So we're going to use a NOT gate and plug the output of our uh, inner door to, a not, to that NOT gate and that NOT gate um, into the, uh, let's use the bottom portion of our uh, latch. Um, now actually we're not going to use the latch, we're going to put it in the AND gate, sorry. We're going to use um, that, here I'll, I'll do the entire thing again so it's easier. <laughs> Uh, take the output of the door, plug it into a NOT gate, and that NOT gate into an AND gate. Now you're going to take that AND gate, and you're going to plug it in to these two door panels as well. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to take your AND gate, and you're going to plug its input into both of the blues on the latch. And as you can see, now our uh, airlock fills up with water, and we can approach the base. We still have a problem though. As you can see, it stays filled with water. So what you're going to need to do to fix that is take the inner two door panels and you're going to plug those in to the top part of our latch. And that, now everything should work fine. The way the latch works is if you send an input to both of its inputs, it will set itself on and stay on no matter what you do. The only way to turn it off is to send an input to the top part of the latch. So in this case, we send an input from our door to the top part of the latch in order to turn it off. As you can see, now our airlock is fully functional, but there's still one more problem. We haven't added the optional lights that give it a little bit more ambiance when it's filling or emptying. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our XOR uh, switch now, and we're going to plug in our XOR switch to both of the lights on the output and now all you have to do is plug the two wire sensors at the top into one side of the XOR switch and the wire sensors at the bottom into the other side. What this will do um, is the XOR switch um, will only turn on if only one of the wire sensors is active. So if our uh, airlock is filling with water or emptying, only one of those water sensors will ever be covered, the bottom one, and the top one will not be covered, um, setting off the alarms. To show you this, I'm going to run back inside, and we'll see. So there goes our alarms. They turn over, they turn off as soon as we can go inside. We go back outside. They'll turn on. The water starts to fill and turn off when we get outside. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. And if there's anything uh, further I can help you with um, for an airlock, 
tutorial or for another wiring tutorial, feel free to ask me in the comments or on the forums. I'll be sure to make a tutorial for you. Thanks for your time, and have a good night.